Hello there everyone, this is Grant, also known as The Collector 75. Welcome to a video that I've been actually meaning to do for about two, maybe three years, I think. I got this figure. This is of course Masterpiece Soundwave. Um, yeah, it is one that I've been meaning to do for ages and then I just never got round to it. I got never got round to it and just never had the time. Um, I think I got it just before my son was born and then after he was born I, I just didn't have enough time and I think I put it away and just, just didn't seem to get the time to um, basically dig it out and just do this video on. Um, which is a shame because I actually got it out of the box and I thought, wow, this is a fantastic figure. I mean, uh, I'm going to start off with here in his um, cassette mode. And this is, of course, this is one of the, well, obviously not the, the original G1 figure. is one of the first figures I ever got when I was a child, back when I was 10 years old, well, on my 10th birthday. And I absolutely loved it. I know some people don't like Soundwave for some reason because he just turned into this Walkman. Um... But I really loved it, and I love the fact that he came with all the cassettes that were turned into other robots. Um, that for me, that was brilliant. Um, I don't have that bit. It is in the box, up in my loft at the moment. Um, I just couldn't be bothered to get out. And plus, it's it, it, it to me, it just doesn't serve any purpose, really. Um, it's only about that big. And then you still do get a bit of a gap, and I just think it looks a bit silly either way. And it's only just to represent a scanner that he had in one of the cartoons. It might have been... Uh, Key to Vector Sigma now, I can't remember which one it was, but it was one of those. So that is the only bit. Um, I do have the rest. Uh, the box is, in fact, up in the loft. Uh, it is the Takara version. Not the, not the Hasbro version, I suppose, if I'd known that they were going to bring out that one in the end. And I did sit in Toys R Us over here. Um, I probably would have waited and saved myself quite a lot of money because I did buy all the other cassettes as well. Um, there we go. What can I say? Anyway, right, so this is his uh, cassette, uh, tape player mode, and it's really good. It is chunky. Um, it looks just like it did on the cartoon. I, I really, really like it. Now, he does have his usual gimmick of you push the button on top, and the cassettes are in there. Now, I'm not a massive fan of this gimmick. Um, I'll tell you why, because... He does hold three cassettes, as you know. You've probably seen a video on this about a thousand bloody times. And I'm well behind. So anyway, so you close this back up. And then he's got a little button here somewhere. I can never remember it is. Uh, it's this one here. So you push this. And then, I don't know if it's going to really show too much. Push that. And it should push another cassette forward. Now, what sometimes happens is you do it again. It always gets stuck in there. Now, I know I'm using... Um, a third party, this is like that little one that was in another episode. I cannot remember me for the life. I think this was made by iGear anyway. Um, but it doesn't matter what cassette you put in there, they always get stuck in there. And then you can hold three by just putting your hand in there and pushing it all the way back. And like I said, you push it once, push it again, and then it's it's a good it's a good idea, but just doesn't really work. And now I think I figured out a way why it doesn't work. Is because these masterpiece cassettes have no die cast parts on them, uh, whereas your old G1 cassette, which does fit in here, works a hell of a lot better because it's got um, die cast in it. It's heavier, and so it just doesn't get stuck because its weight will then stop it. As it opens, it sort of like gets sort of trapped in here, like looking like that. Its weight will then carry it forward. Or so that's what I think anyway. Because I do have a lot more luck with the G1 figures in his chest compartment than the masterpiece ones. Um I, I don't think there's a way they could have done it better, because obviously a normal tape thing, you put the tape in and it does have another bit of plastic inside there holding it, so you can you can't actually move it. Couldn't do it with this one. So to, to for, for the gimmick. So, you know, there's not much you could do there. I'm gonna put laser beak away. Um he is probably one of the best figures I have ever seen, um, masterpiece-wise, G1-wise, ever, because it's exactly the same size. It's probably just a little bigger or smaller, because this won't fit in the original G1. I can't remember now. It might do. If he's smaller, he will. Um, but it just has all his weapons included in it and looks like it does off the cartoon. Um, it's brilliant. I cannot say more than that. It is probably one of the finest pieces of Transformers engineering I've ever seen, is uh, this cassette. Brilliant. Put him back in there. Um, I'm going to come to him. I'm not going to do him in this review. I'm going to do a review of the, my other mini cassettes that I've got. Um, so we're going to get this into robot mode, and it is a fantastic robot mode. We are going to start here now, then. I do have to separate one of these bits just round here. Um, whatever it is, so let's just move the arm out of the way. We can move this bit out as well. 
somehow. There we go, let's get that out. Now it does disconnect from around here. I think it's this bit here, I think. No, nope, it just wants to come over. It is really actually really bloody tight in there, isn't it? Um, come out. Oh dear, that's a pain in the bum, isn't it? Ah, come out. Ah, there you go, I think I've got it. Ah, there we go. It is an absolute nightmare, that bit. So anyway, so you get sort of in here, just sort of prise it around. Let's open this bit out, because that sometimes makes a lot of difference. It gives it a bit more movement. <laughs> Let's get that bit out. Close that back up. Um, yeah, it's in there, and it doesn't really want to move. Why does it, does it get tabbed in somewhere? Not really. It is just this bit. I think it's just there we go. That's the easy way. You just bend it at that little pivot joint there, and then that makes all oh, that makes a lot of difference. That does. Try to figure that out first of all. Anyway, right. So then you can pull that back down if you want. Um, then we're going to lift that up. These are going to become his feet, which is pretty cool. Now I do like it because this is going to follow the transformation of his original G1. Uh, pretty damn closely apart from this bit obviously this is an ingenious thing that it uses now we have to disconnect that leg we're going to bring that down now we just fold this all the way out you can do this in a number of uh, ways hold on almost done this wrong way I'm going to break it as you can see you have to sort of like s oh god bloody hell there we go it is very very tight sorry if that was off camera uh, there we go so we're going to come back around to here You've extended the leg, um, or it just extended on its own really. Uh, I'm going to bring the foot down, and then this just falls flat against here. It does sort of just stay just like that. Uh, I'm going to get the other leg. Oh my god, bloody hell. These do tab in really well. Now you bring it down, and it does sort of extend just as you're going to do it. And then again, you just bring this out. You're going to flatten this piece out, and then rotate around at the knee, bring that down his feet down bring that down and then just place that against his leg and then there's his legs pretty much sorted there we go now then what do I do with this piece I can never remember this bit uh, oh yeah these bits fold down and then slot under there like that and they f oh I like that those bits flip up under there and tab in under there that's really clever I love that then all right we're not going to do his thing just yet uh, these just flip around and we'll tab straight into there like that giving us a hang on you can't see what I'm doing uh, so we're gonna move up slightly we're gonna move him away a little bit there we go so what I've done is just bring his arms around giving him that much better G1 sort of look um, we're gonna open this out if I can that should give us his fist in here now if you did have this other piece that i was going on about earlier that is stuck around here you can put it on the front here giving him that sensor thing uh, which is pretty cool anyway right so we're gonna but we're not gonna do that because i'm never big on the gimmicks that they come with it's like my masterpiece mole brawl wheel jack whatever his name is um he came with that immobiliser thing i'm not really that bothered if you want my opinion um, i mean it's good i like it but not that bothered uh, right, so what we've got left, um, these bits I think just fold down like that, that's good, I like that. And then you've got a choice here, this is his gun, I'm going to put that over there. And then now, you can either leave him like this, let me just angle it up a little bit more because you want to see this head of him, don't you? Um, now you can either leave him like that or you can actually bring this around like so and then start rotating it around here, oh, it doesn't want to do that does it? Anyway. And then bring that around like so. Um, oh, it probably just goes like that, doesn't it? There we go. So then it gives him his shoulder mounted rocket launcher. Now you can come around to the back here and re reveal his head, close that back up, and that is Soundwave in his robot mode. And if you want my opinion, this is probably one of the best masterpiece figures you are likely to get. Other than that sound wave cassette, if you want my opinion. Um, look at that. I mean, that is just fantastic. It is brilliant. Um, I, I, I love it. I love this Transformer. He is definitely one of my favourites. He does have a little trouble standing. I could have just done with a little hill spur maybe somewhere. That would have been pretty cool. Um, but you're not going to get one. Um, 
just so you could get him in a sort of like a dynamic pose. But once you get him sort of like standing up a bit better, um, he does stand no problem like that. I'm not too keen on those joints. They do look like, I'm always worried they're going to be a little bit unnatural. Um, um, but you can sort that out, just bring those forward oh, like that. And then that gives him a better look. And then you can rotate his head up like that. And that gives him a great look. Um, with his gun, uh, you just simply extend in that. And then there is a tab in here somewhere. I can't remember how we get that out now. Um, it's been a while since I've done this. Ah, yes. All right, so there's the thing for his gun. Um, that does pull that out and then you just gotta hopefully grab that you can put this in his hand and he does have articulated fingers so you sort of wedge this into his hand it does have a groove in there somewhere if I can find it without looking for it if not I'm gonna have to turn him around and there we go there is his groove just sort of like wedge that in there stick it in the groove get in there oh yeah bugger get in <laughs> Right, you know what, I bloody hate these toys because they always make me look like a bloody idiot. Um, hello, what was that, bloody... Oh, that was his... That was his full finger. We'll put that on in a minute. Oh, oh it's gone under there. Don't worry about his full finger. You're never going to notice it. Um, he does hold his gun a lot better than that, and I can prove it. Hold on. Because you just bring in... Let's get that bloody out. <laughs> put it over there. I'll bring in Sound Blaster. <laughs> Now, as you can see, he's holding his gun properly. And I've got him in a bit of a more dynamic pose. Um, I had to get a sound blaster because I love sound wave and I love sound blaster. Um, so I had to get it. And of course, he does come with rat bat. Now, you can buy a KO rat bat these days for about £10. So you didn't need to spend what I paid on this guy to get rat bat. But I wanted sound blaster anyway. So, And they haven't knocked off sound blaster. So, you know... Um, I ain't that bothered really, because I did want a sound blaster. I love sound blaster. Um, you can't go wrong with a, a black sound wave, really, can you? Um, there we go. So put him over here. Um, he does have the extended chest, um, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't know why it isn't red like the original. I think this is more purple. It's a bit strange, but there we go. And then just to give it like your thing, you can get your rumble there. I, I always call the red one rumble. I don't care what anybody says. Um, and then we have Ravage. Ravage is a bit of a mixed bag for me. Um, don't know whether I prefer this or the Classics version. Um, either one was an okay Ravage. This one does come with weapons attached, but they're really poor. Um, we do have Buzzsaw um, for, for him there. And then we come for Frenzy. I love Frenzy. Frenzy is really good. And then you can um, put your third party uh, cassettes. There we have, I um, can't remember his name now. Uh, whatever his name is, Squawk Box. Will he stand up? No, he doesn't want bloody stand up now. So his legs, the legs at the bottom. Oh, Always a bit weird. There you go. And then we come to one of my favourite ones. Oh, what's that one do? He's falling apart. He? Um, he's Overkill. Um, he's a favourite of mine. I like him. And then there's uh, Squawk Box. Ah, oh, no, hang on. Slugfest. There we go. He, he is pretty cool. I do like all them. Um, and then just to add how they look together you've got to then just take these away or take some of them away we'll take them away we'll give it like a classic lineup we'll take him away we'll take his gun away we'll just put his hand down there for a minute and then we'll put like you can have him with shockwave uh this is of course the fans toys shockwave and um do i prefer this or the new takara uh shockwave that's coming out because obviously I never thought Takara would make a masterpiece shockwave because I thought it was the mould was owned by someone else. So obviously they must have bought the rights to it or something like that, but they made the right. Now, which one do I prefer? Do I prefer this one or the Takara? Uh, sorry, the um, yeah, the Takara one. Uh, mm, that's hard because this really looks brilliant. I mean, I love the legs. You look at the legs on the uh, Takara version and they do look very thin, um, but they still it still looks good. And I still like this one. Um, yeah, I think you're hard pushed. I don't. I don't think just because you own this one that you automatically got to go out and sell it just because you want a Takara one. I might end up buying it anyway because I'm not overly keen on the gun mode for this fans toys one. I think that's where for me it lets it down. Um, and from what I've seen of the pictures of the Takara one, the gun mode does look pretty damn faithful to the original generation one Shockwave. Um, but this still looks brilliant, and I do have. I've, Still meaning to put all the um, attachments on his arm to give him the better arm and the solid hands and gun. Uh, I think that would be pretty cool. And then you can move him to the background there. 
And at least this guy does have thicker legs and die cast parts on him there. I'm not quite sure about the Takara one yet. And obviously Takara hasn't made a new masterpiece Megatron. Um, and this guy, this Exapolion, just looks fantastic, if you ask me. Um, it's not perfect, but it's a damn sight better than that bloody Takara masterpiece Megatron. That had its faults. I, I did read somewhere that the guy had to design it within a couple of days or something. Why? They did that. Oh, who knows? Because what's the point in that? Because then you're just going to make an inferior product, aren't you? So there we go. Um, but this guy, at the moment, fills that gap ever so brilliantly. I think he's really good. Um, yeah, for gap filling anyway. Um, maybe if Takara or Hasbro do make a better masterpiece Megatron, then you might want to reconsider. But until then, he's definitely worth the money. I mean, I think I paid about 100 quid for him. Say like that, in that region. Might have been cheaper, I don't know. Yeah, it might have been, I don't know, somewhere in that region anyway. But he's a, good, he's a great figure. I mean, he looks, and he comes with a lot of accessories, and he just looks better than the bloody masterpiece MP5 Megatron. Um, yeah. Still, right, this has been my review of Masterpiece Soundwave. All my stuff has just fallen over on my shelf, which is always clever. Um, like I say, you cannot go wrong with this figure. He was, like I say, available in Toys R Us about a year ago with all the cassettes. Um, I think it was for a fraction of the price that I probably paid for all of this to get in the Takara versions. Um, I think someone said the quality might have been a bit lower for some reason. I'm not totally sure on that. Um, but it just looks amazing. These are what Masterpiece figures should be all about, if you ask me. And this is why some, some of these, these days, apart from the Combiner Wars, the Combiner Wars, are, some of those figures are really good. Um, maybe just a bit a little bit lazy in places. These um, Masterpiece figures, I've never really, really had a bad one. I mean, I think some of them look a bit iffy, maybe. But, yeah, oh, well, apart from some of the earlier ones, um, yeah, Rodham's Prime, oh, I'll steer clear of that. You can forget that one. I would never touch that one with a barge pile. Um, but the new one looks good, the new Hot Rod, so I might get that, depending on what I see of the reviews and everything. Um, anyway, I'm rambling on. Um, this has been Graham, the Collector 75, with Masterpiece Soundwave, Masterpiece Soundblast, and a few Masterpiece cassettes, and some third-party Masterpiece-ish Megatrons and Shockwave. And there's a few cassettes down there. Right, so I'll see you all next time. Bye for now. Oh,